worthwhileers welcome. This is the brief story of how I went from a heavy smoker to an ultra runner. I'll kick it off with a little bit of the backstory. So basically, I started smoking and drinking at a pretty young age, around 14 years old. By the time that I was around 17, 18 and finishing high school, I was a heavy smoker and a frequent drinker. Then, for around approximately the next 20 years, I spent pretty much all of my time heavily involved in the music industry. Now, me and my mates were hip hop artists, we started our own little label, and it was a pretty debaucherous lifestyle of gigs, parties, studio sessions, the writing and recording. All of this was very conducive to the smoking and the drinking, and smoking lots of weed as well. And then on top of that, from the time I finished school, I always had an office job. Working in offices, you live for your smoke breaks and those Friday night drinks. Probably some other nights too. At this point in my life, sport or running or anything of that kind was just the furthest away from anything I was ever doing. And I could have quite happily stayed doing the music thing. I was very happy doing that. I enjoyed it. It's where all my friends and my social circles were. And it was all I'd known for my whole adult life. But deep down, I knew that I just was not reaching my full potential in life. It was really just a like a safe zone. It was predictable. It was no risk. Yeah, it was just a place that I felt safe. It was the comfort zone. And when I say there were no risks, the risks that were there were the health risks. And anyone who still smokes or has smoked would know that over the years, cigarettes just became more and more expensive. Now, I wasn't earning a whole lot of money. It was just getting harder and harder to justify spending all my money on this poison. It was making me feel like crap mentally and physically, starting to be at the forefront of my mind that there was no logic to this situation. So that's when I knew something major had to happen. I was 36 years old and it was time for something else, a new chapter. Now, I didn't know what this new chapter was gonna be exactly, but getting it started was all I could think about for about six to 12 months. So I finished off the two music projects that I've been working on and I did one last hurrah run of gigs with my boys around the country. I took my long service leave from work. I left the city and I isolated myself down in a beach house for two weeks. It was time for a detox. So the plan was no smoking of any kind, cigarettes, weed, whatever, no drinking alcohol, because that was probably just gonna make me smoke again, and no junk food either. So I said some parting words to my cigarettes and I chucked them in the fire, and that was it, I never looked back. So it's a pretty significant part of the story being down at this house in Phillip Island because that balcony is the balcony upon which I smoked my very last cigarette and joint for the record. And this fireplace over here is the very fireplace in which I threw my remaining cigarettes into the fire ceremonially. We're at four years since that happened. It's amazing what's happened in between now and then. So having decided that I was gonna take some time away from music and all the habits that went along with it, I needed some new activities to do. I needed something to do with my time. And that's when an opportunity presented itself to me not to just not be unhealthy, but to proactively be healthy. So I had to ask myself the question, what do healthy people do? I know, they go for a jog, they go to the gym. So I go for this run up the street, having been a non-smoker for three days, and I made it about 300 meters up the street and I was cooked. This road behind me is where I went for my first run after I quit the darts. Got it to the top of that hill, I thought I'd run a marathon. <laughs> then I dusted off these old dumbbells that I bought 10 years earlier and used once. And uh, yeah, tried to do a little bit of a workout. But from there, some habits started to form. I started to do this on a regular basis. The momentum started to build. I was eating clean, going for a jog and doing a workout every day. Then about eight months in, the pandemic hit. But that didn't stop me at all. In fact, it might have even helped. I just knuckled down even more with that routine. So after a while, I've been posting some of my 5K times from my uh, Fitbit at the time on 
social media and an old friend of mine hit me up and he said, look, I've been running for about 10 years. I see you've been doing this running thing. I can tell you you're into it a bit and uh, let's go for a run, let's catch up. So we go meet up and I run 10 Ks for the first time ever in my life. I couldn't even believe it. Up to that point, I've been doing all of my running alone and it was, yeah, it was enjoyable having someone else to run with. So I'm like, well, let's, let's do this again. And Taz said, shout out Taz, why don't you come down and train with my run crew? You know, come down, train a couple of times, see if you like it. That run club was the Crosby crew. And I went down, did a few sessions and that really kicked things up a number of notches. It's safe to say that pretty soon I was obsessed with running. Maybe it was the uh, addictive personality that people talk about, but hey, fair trade, right? But it was so good. I mean, training with a group, I was getting fitter, I was getting faster, I was becoming better educated about all the things that there is to know about running. And I was getting really inspired by all the amazing runners and coaches that are part of the Crosby Crew group. I did a couple of short races, about 8K length races, part of the Summer Sunset series. And then in late 2021, I did my first half marathon, which was just such a big deal at the time. It was like, whoa. So on top of that, this healthy new lifestyle actually came with some side effects, some positive side effects. Because once you start to see the benefits of pushing yourself out of the comfort zone, it just makes you want to do it more and more. I felt so much better physically and mentally. I looked better and my confidence was up a lot. I was back out there dating. After a steady stream of duds, I was lucky enough to meet the love of my life. And she just so happened to be an accomplished marathoner. You guessed it, I'm talking about the amazing K-Mac. So anyway, not to be outdone and very eager to impress as well, it was, uh, just a couple of weeks before I'd signed up myself for my first full marathon. And dare I say, there was a little bit of encouragement from K-Mac herself, a bit of a nudge. She's good at giving me a nudge. And yeah, I trained for that Canberra Marathon 2022 and got it done. And from there, my love of long runs and K-Mac just got stronger and stronger. So in September 2022, we set our sights on the Tarawira Ultra Marathon 50K over in New Zealand. And after countless hours training on our tired legs, we got on a plane, flew across the ditch, we finished the race and officially became ultra marathoners. Now, today is the 1st of May, 2023. It's exactly four years since I threw those cigarettes into the fire and started something that I never, ever could have predicted. I knew it was gonna be good, but I did not know it was gonna be this, and I didn't know it was gonna be this good. So two weeks from today, I'm gonna to be running the Ultra Trail Australia UTA 50K in the Blue Mountains. It will be my second Ultra and my second UTMB World Series event in the space of three months and I am super excited. Now, I don't know where my running journey is gonna take me from there, but I know I'm gonna enjoy finding out. So to wrap this up, I'm gonna say a version of the thing I've been saying at this time every year for the last four years, which is, I know all of this is about me and my situation and my story, but I know for a fact that other people take something away from this and they apply their own plan to their own situation. And the reason that I know that for a fact is because so many people have told me. Now I take no credit whatsoever, but I do like to reiterate the message that I know to be true. You can take back the control, even if you just take the smallest little action each day. You just gotta find the way to take that little leap of faith, move towards the fear, because you find out so quickly, in reality, it's nowhere near as scary as the catastrophe that goes on in your mind. In fact, sometimes it's the complete opposite to that. So that's it for me. I'm smoke, drug and alcohol free, four years strong, baby. Let's go for five. Before you go, please show some love, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. 
And then tell me in the comments, what is the one thing that you're going to challenge yourself to do before the end of the year? I'd love to know. Hit me up and we'll see you in the next one. Love you worthwhiles. We out.